the value of renewable energy for transforming our electrical system is well known. We all hear about the potential of wind and solar energy. But the greatest challenge for integrating these technologies at larger scales into existing energy systems is variability. When the wind doesn't blow or the sun doesn't shine, we don't want our lights going out, our fridges going off, or particularly in, in Edmonton where I grew up, the heaters going out. Now, in developed countries, we rely on electricity to be there when we want it, when we need it. The baseload power, not when it's convenient for Mother Nature. That's what makes coal and natural gas so attractive for providing baseload electricity, the electricity that's always there when you plug in or flick a flip a switch. The pathway that was imagined at the Equinox Summit for making renewable production a large part of our electrical future focused particularly on the development of large-scale storage capacity, particularly large-scale battery capacity, that could store electricity when it is being produced and release it when we need it, making it as reliable as coal or natural gas. With technologies that are beginning to emerging, emerging today, uh, which the team will tell you about in a moment, parts of the pathway have already started. But realizing the potential requires us to move these technologies from the laboratory into demonstration, which has to involve regulators, policymakers, and businesses. And Lauren will follow up after Jatine to discuss how we see that starting to happen in the near future. There are a number of energy storage technologies and each has a unique role in meeting the requirements of the transmission system. No single energy storage solution can match the multiple device requirements uh, for, the, for the transmission grid. For example, the vanadium redox flow, flow batteries are best suited to load shifting applications involving long hours, but unsuitable for large scale grid applications such as grid angular stability, or grid voltage stability, or grid frequency, uh, excursion suppression, and regulation control, and so on. So within electrochemical batteries, flow batteries have been identified as promising. The simplicity of flow batteries, and how they work, and their ability to scale for varying needs makes them actually a serious contender. Essentially, Flow batteries store energy as charged ions in two separate tanks of solutions, all using one common electrolyte. The most attractive feature of flow batteries is this. Power and energy are uncoupled, giving design flexibility for stationary energy storage. They do not suffer from deteriorations, have longer cycles, and are easy to recharge. Of these, the vanadium redox flow battery has seen some important advances and developments in the recent past and applications on a reasonably large scale. VRBs favor applications with high energy to power ratios, namely applications requiring several hours of stor storage, load shifting, and uh, load shifting that lasts for several hours. Besides electrochemical batteries, there are many different types of energy storage, each suited to specific applications. Superconducting magnetic energy storage systems has rapid discharge capabilities, allowing for pulse power and system stability applications. We describe, for example, superconducting magnetic energy storage systems, sometimes the acronym is SMISES, to illustrate the complementary solutions to VRBs. The SMIS is essentially suitable for instantaneous load following, stabilization of the system, oscillations, spinning reserve capacity, and so on. Some of the critical challenges for battery technologies are, of course, well recognized. Uh, they are to reduce manufacturing costs, develop low-cost membranes and electrodes with lower electrical resistance and good electrochemical performance. Large-scale applications for commercial viability is, of course, another key aspect that we need to work on and develop further. Near-term actions could help accelerate the commercialization of battery storage technologies. For instance, regulatory frameworks can be created to incentivize the use of battery storage to prevent or penalize renewable energy spilling. 
Experts can also work with utility companies on providing low-cost, baseload power supply by coupling renewable energy with battery storage. With the appropriate legislative framework, the private sector can help advance battery technology and bring it to scale production. What we would like to see are large-scale battery demonstration projects throughout the world to de-risk the technology and bring it to commercial production. By 2030, renewable energy coupled with battery storage could outpace fossil fuel energy production.